What's up guys, I'm Paul and welcome to the Ecommerce Gold YouTube channel. So in this video, we're going to be looking at PrestaShop to see whether or not it's a good option for building an e-commerce website. Now according to BuiltWith, there's currently over 300,000 websites globally that are powered by the PrestaShop software, which means it's a pretty popular option, especially in the USA and Europe. But is it any good? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. Because we're going to look at the pricing, the features that are available, what the theme selection and customization options are like and then a quick overview of what the platform is actually like to use. So make sure you stick around because I'm going to try and cover as much as possible in this video. Now for this review we're just going to be looking at the self-hosted version of PrestaShop. They do offer a hosted version but I haven't personally tried that one out so we're just going to be looking at the self-hosted option which is the most popular option when it comes to using PrestaShop. So with the introduction out of the way Let's get on with the review. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at is the pricing. Now, as we're looking at the self-hosted version of PrestaShop, it is 100% free to use the software, but you are gonna need some hosting because you need something for the software to actually run on. Now, for when you're just getting started, you're probably gonna be fine just using normal shared hosting, which can be had usually between five and $10 a month. But if your site starts to grow, you start to get more visitors, more customers, you may want to invest in upgrading your hosting. And for this, you want to go for specific e-commerce quality hosting, potentially with PCI compliance as well, because it just makes life easier for e-commerce websites. And this generally starts from around about $30 a month, but can run into the hundreds of dollars a month, depending on your requirements. Also, when it comes to pricing, you may have quite high initial startup costs with PrestaShop because the default options when it comes to themes and modules are somewhat limited. And there may need to be some things like premium themes, or you may need specific functionality for your PrestaShop site. And this may come with a higher initial investment. But I'm gonna cover that more as we go through the video. But the software itself is free to use, but there are other costs associated with PrestaShop. So now we've got the price out of the way, Let's look at what PrestaShop actually offers. Now, as standard, PrestaShop comes with a pretty good selection of features, more than enough to get a basic e-commerce site set up. But for some reason, PrestaShop don't make it easy to actually find these features on their website. It took me a while to actually find out where their feature page was. And I don't know why they do this. Surely as an e-commerce platform, one of the main selling points of your platform is the features you offer, and you'd want this easily accessible not according to PrestaShop for some reason. But I have found quite a few features available. I went through the list and on screen now is my full written review of PrestaShop, which I will leave a link to in the description below. So you can go and check that out for yourself. And these are some of the features available. Now I'm not gonna go through all these in this video because it'd just be me reading off the screen and that would be incredibly boring. It would also make the video really, really long as well. So if you do wanna see a breakdown of these features, I would recommend going and checking out the written review. As I say, that'll be linked to in the description below. But there's a good selection of e-commerce features, marketing and SEO tools. They also have a good selection of payment gateways as well. And there's also a few shipping options you can choose. But one thing I do want to talk about specifically is the PrestaShop modules, because these are add-ons that you can use to add additional functionality to your PrestaShop site. So these are the same as apps with Shopify and plugins with WordPress or WooCommerce, just so you know what these are, if you know about those other two platforms as well. Now, when it comes to pressure shop modules, there's a huge selection. So if we just jump over to the add-on marketplace and select modules, you'll see there's over 4,000 to choose from, which is actually one of the largest selections of add-on features of any platform out there. I think it's only beaten by things like Shopify and WooCommerce. A lot of other platforms, this is a way bigger number than what's available on them. Now, when it comes to these add-ons, most of them are paid options. There's only around about 150 that are free to use. And the prices for the paid ones can be quite high. Now, as you see on this screen, they are listed in pounds. That's because it's picked up on my location. I'm based in the UK. But if you're based in the US, it will show dollars. If you're based in Europe, it will show euros. I don't know whether it shows other currencies around the world as well. So unfortunately, I haven't got a way to check that. Now the pricing of these modules does vary. They start from less than $100 ranging to a few hundred dollars. I'm going to use dollars just because it's easier and this is quite a global platform if that makes sense. Now the initial cost for some of these can be quite high. As you can see say Amazon Marketplace for example. For me that would cost me £238.99. I'm not sure what that would be in dollars. But one of the things with 
press the shops add-ons is that it's cheaper the following year so you pay that for the first year then for every year afterwards it would be 69 pounds a year now this may fluctuate depending on the developer of the add-on but the initial cost is always going to be higher than the recurring cost and this applies to pretty much every single add-on that press the shop offers so this is something you want to be aware of when you're thinking about the features that you need for your store. What are you going to need and is this included with Press the Shop as standard or are you going to have to pay for it as an additional module and is that going to make it a more expensive option than something else that's out there? Something you do need to consider. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is support. But as this is the self-hosted version of Press to Shop, support is somewhat limited. So if you actually go onto the Press to Shop support page, it seems like there's lots of options available. You can buy like support plans and things like that, but they're not actually available. So if you click select this plan, nothing is actually found. And it's the same for most of the options on this page. If you want the migration or update option, it's not available. I don't know why Press the Shop do this. That's kind of a pointless page to me, advertising all these things, but you can't actually go through and buy them. But if you do actually scroll down to the bottom of the page, there is a contact us option. So you can fill this out and then send this off to Presta Shop with your inquiry and they will get back to you and offer you some kind of solution. Maybe they'll link to some documentation or they may be able to offer you a quote to do this for you. Because as it says there, contact our advisors and get a free quote in less than 48 hours. So maybe a lot of the advice is paid for. Now, when it comes to other support options that are available, if you just hover over resources, as you can see, there's a forum, there's also guides documentation and there is a training center as well but the training center is paid for. You do have to pay to access that. It's not free to use, but they do have pretty good documentation and say so the forum is pretty good as well because you can go in there and ask questions and people from the community will come on and answer them if they can. So that's a pretty good way to access support. Also, you've got the thing you can do where you can just Google your query and see if somebody has answered your problem. But when it comes to general support directly from the platform, it is quite limited. So next up, we're gonna look at the theme selection and customization options. Now, when it comes to theme selection, Press the Shop has a massive amount of themes to choose from. So if we go back onto the marketplace, go onto template, as you can see, there's over 2000 themes to choose from. That's a huge selection, but the problem is, all of these options available from Press to Shop in their marketplace are paid for options. And they range somewhere from around about $50 into a couple of hundred dollars. So you are gonna to have to pay for these. As standard, there's only one free theme you can choose from. So if we go into the dashboard, go into design, theme and logo, it will show you what themes you have available. And there's just the classic version, which is the default theme. Now, if you actually go outside of the Press to Shop ecosystem, there are some developers who make free themes. So you have to search Google for this and then download them and upload them. But there are some out there, you just have to go and search for them. They're not available directly through Press to Shop's own ecosystem. So there is a huge selection of themes, but one issue with Press to Shop's themes is customization. It is incredibly limited. Now, when you go onto the theme section of your dashboard, you can see you can change the header logo, the mail logo. This is what's included in your emails and your favicon as well. And if you go down to the bottom, you can configure your page layouts. So if we click on that one, it comes up with these options. So you can change the layout of the pages, but you can't actually see what these look like. So you just kind of going off the drop down menu. Do you want it full width? Do you want three columns, two columns? But you can't actually see what this is gonna look like on the front end of your store. It doesn't give you any kind of preview of it, which to me doesn't really work that well. I wanna see exactly what I'm choosing. But then you can go onto the page configuration and this brings out what looks like a theme customizer because you can go through and you can change all the different sections of your website. And as you can see, if I hover over this, it opens up the slider section. And if we go down and click on any section, it'll bring up that relevant section. And then we can go on and either install modules that we can then configure, or we can configure existing modules that are already installed, if that makes sense. So if we click on the configure, it takes you to another page. So you can choose the amount of products to that can be displayed and also the category from which to pick the products. That's surprisingly hard to say. But if you go back, sometimes it doesn't always take you back to the customizer. As you can see, it takes you back to the module manager. 
And this is one of the things with PrestaShop. It doesn't work that well in terms of workflow. There's lots of times where you go from one page and then you need to go to another page and then you try and go back and you can't go back to where you was originally. And this just makes the workflow of PrestaShop quite difficult. And I'll cover that more when we start looking at what it's actually like to use. But if we go back into the design options and go back into page configuration, we go back to where we was before. And as you can see, you can edit the home page, the category page, and the product page. Now, when you do go with some paid theme options, they do have built-in customizers. So it depends on the theme you're using as to how much customization you actually get over the look and feel of your website. But from my testing, there isn't a live customizer out there, so you can't kind of like drag and drop things. It's just really limited and it's quite frustrating to use, especially when you go on and configure things, then can't go back directly into the theme customizer. And then you have the advanced customization options and these aren't really that advanced to be honest. It basically just evolves around downloading your current theme. So if you wanna make any changes to the HTML or CSS, you can do that outside of your Presser Shop site. Then you can upload it back to your site and you can create a child theme as well. So if there's any updates to the parent theme, it won't affect the child theme. But this isn't really advanced customization to me. This is just downloading and uploading a theme but you have to have knowledge of HTML and CSS in order to be able to do this. So overall, theme customization just really isn't great in PrestaShop. With some of the paid themes, customization does get better, but it's still not great, especially as standard. It's very limited and quite frustrating to use. So the next thing we're gonna look at is an overview of what is PrestaShop like to use? What's it like to get started with, manage your inventory and manage your orders? Because the last two are probably where you're gonna spend the most time when you're actually running your store. So you want these to be good. So first off is what's it like to actually get started? Well, it is a bit more of an involved process to actually get started with PrestaShop because you need to get your hosting set up, then you need to install the PrestaShop software. Now some hosts out there will do this for you, but you may have to do it yourself, which means you're probably gonna to have to go into cPanel or the equivalent admin area that your hosting provider has, and then install the PrestaShop software. And you do wanna make sure you install it properly, so go through and make sure all the settings are set up properly before you click that install button, because you just wanna make life easier for yourself in the long run. Things like, getting your SSL certificate set up before you install the PrestaShop software and then make sure you install it on the HTTPS protocol. So it is a bit more of a technical way of getting started, but say some hosts will do this for you. Now on the first login to your admin dashboard, you'll be greeted by a setup wizard. And I would recommend going through this setup wizard because it is one of the better ones I've actually come across. And it will actually show you tips and tricks actually on pages. So it will take you through how to set up a new product and it will have information tabs come up on how to do certain things, what you need to click on, what you need to set up, things like that. It is a really useful wizard. And you're also taken through by Preston, the rather cute mascot that Preston Shop uses, which is quite a nice touch. So I would definitely recommend going through this because it is a good setup wizard and say it's one of the better ones out there that I've used. But overall, the admin dashboard is quite a nice place to be. It's pretty well designed. They've gone for a sidebar navigation menu. Everything is clearly labeled and also the subheadings are as well. Now, one thing I don't really like is the dashboard homepage because it just feels a bit cluttered to me. And one thing I don't like is you can't pick and choose what's available in your dashboard homepage. You can't choose to remove any of these options. And I don't like that. I want to be able to pick and choose what information I have access to in my homepage. Because it may be that I just want the products and sales analytics to be at the top. Maybe I don't want this dashboard overview available. I can't pick and choose what's available. And I just don't like this and say, I like to be able to pick and choose what information I have access to when I log into my e-commerce website. I don't like it being dictated to me. Now you can add more dashboard modules if you want to, but you need to go back into the add-on marketplace to be able to install these. So some of these aren't gonna be free to use. But there is the press to shop metrics that basically aligns with Google and you have to go and set that up yourself. So overall the dashboard isn't bad. It's quite easy to navigate. I just don't like the homepage because I have no control over it. But what's it like to actually manage your inventory? Well, this is quite important. So let's go into catalog, 
we'll go into products and we'll look at the add new product page. Now the add new product page is pretty simple, it's pretty easy to use. As you can see, you've got all your basic information on the first page, so your pictures, your summary, description, combinations, whether this is a simple product or a product with combinations. You can also choose if it's a standard product, a pack of products, so a product bundle, or a virtual product. And you can go down, you can set the price, set any taxes, which you may want to actually go into the settings and set up all your taxes before you start setting all your product inventory, just makes life easier. And then you've got different tabs that you can work through. So you've got quantities. And what's nice about all these tabs is they've kept it pretty simple. They haven't overloaded it with options. And this means it's pretty quick and easy to work through and get a product set up. As you can see, you've got search engine optimization options. So you can set a meta title, meta description, and choose to use a friendly URL if you want to. And then you've got options. So where do you want this product to appear and things like that. Conditions, all things that are available for things like Google Shopping and things like that, you can fill out in the conditions and references. So it is actually a pretty good page. It's pretty easy to use and they haven't overcomplicated it with too many options, which is a problem that some platforms do fall into. Organizing your inventory is also very simple because they've gone with the very simple category structure which allows you to have parent and child categories so you can make a good hierarchy for your products and you just come into the category section of the home page, click on add new category and then you just go through, fill up all the information and choose whether you want it to be a parent category or whether you want it to be a child category. If it's a child category, you just choose the parent category. It's as simple as that. But what about when it comes to actually managing your inventory? Say you've set all of your products up, go through and be able to basically edit quantities or just go in and quickly and easily edit your products. Well, this isn't that great with PrestaShop because there's no real bulk options available from the main overview page. So if we select a couple of products, you'll see that we can click on bulk actions and there's not many options available. We can just deactivate it, duplicate it, or delete it. There's no options to go in and make edits to the products. To do that, what you have to do is you either have to go on and edit the product, go back into the edit screen and actually go through and edit it that way, or there is a stock option down the bottom here, and this allows you to just go in and quickly change the quantity. And this means it's quite limited what you can actually do. And if you've got a large product inventory, it could be quite frustrating to go through and have to edit products individually. The lack of bulk editors does make it somewhat frustrating to use. And why they haven't added the stock option into the main overview page, I don't know. Because to me, it's just better to put tools available that are quick and easy to access rather than having to go onto different pages. But this is a problem with PrestaShop all the way through. The workflow just isn't the most optimal as I've already discussed. So next up, let's go in and look at the order management because hopefully this is where you're gonna spend the most time in your store. So if we go onto orders, it'll bring up some demo orders that are available. And once again, the bulk options are very limited. So if we go in and we just select all the orders that we've got, click on bulk actions, there's not much you can do. You can either change the order status or open in new tabs, which will open the order information in a new tab. But what if you want to go and print the order information off? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. The first one is you can go and select the orders individually and then choose to print the order and you can print an invoice that way. But if you've got lots of orders, you don't want to be doing that. There is an option here in the side so you can print invoices. But there is a problem with this for me because you just select the date range. You can't select specific orders. So you can do it by status if you want to, but still you may be printing orders that you don't need to print. And then you've got invoice options for what's actually included in the invoice that you print off. I would much prefer it to be able, if you could go into your orders and you could just select the orders you wanted. So if you wanted them to, a bulk option to print that order. It made life so much easier. Now, one nice little touch that PrestaShop does have is credit slips, which isn't available on a lot of e-commerce platforms. So what you can do is if you've issued a refund to somebody, you can issue them a credit slip as well, which is just a nice little touch and be able to issue documentation along with refunds. Because say a lot of e-commerce platforms don't have this functionality or it's a paid functionality. So it's a nice little touch. You can also choose to print delivery slips as well, but once again, you just pick the date range. You can't pick individual orders, and this means that you could just print things off that you don't want to actually print. And as you can see, it prints to PDF. So this actually downloads on your computer, then you would print those PDFs off 
using the software that you want for printing. You can also check on shopping cart history as well so you can see how many abandoned carts you've had, how many completed shopping carts. That's quite useful to see. But overall, it just feels a little bit disjointed to me, the order management system. It'd be much better if they could just combine the options they have, so the options to print invoices or delivery slips into the main order overview page, because it would just make it much quicker and much easier to print orders. So now we've looked at what PrestaShop is like to use, is it any good? Now, it's not bad. It'll definitely get the job done for building the e-commerce website, but it wouldn't be my go-to option. In fact, I find it quite frustrating to use because things just don't seem to flow all that well. And that's one of my main criticisms is the workflow just isn't optimal. Even with things like theme customizations, going into different configurations, not being able to go back to the main theme customizer, the fact that with your product management and also the order management, the bulk options are split over different pages. It just makes it quite frustrating to use and you could waste a lot of time actually managing your store. They'd be much better combining all these tools into the overview pages for the products and also orders as well because it just makes it so much easier to use. Another thing that for me is somewhat of a drawback is the fact that a lot of the options are paid options. There's not much that's free to actually use with PrestaShop. I know the software is free and I know they have about 150 modules but everything else seems to be a paid option and it could work out to be quite expensive even though initially you're using free software. It could actually work out more than using hosted solutions that in many ways are a lot easier to use. So while it's not bad, it definitely wouldn't be my go-to and I think there are better options out there. And it's a shame because the fundamentals are there. They've actually got a good base. It's just some of the execution processes on PrestaShop just aren't as good as they are with other platforms, which is why for me, it wouldn't be something that I would recommend. So I hope you found this review helpful. I hope it's answered some questions around PrestaShop. If it has, a like would be absolutely awesome and very much appreciated. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do by buying me a coffee using the link in the description below. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And as I say, I hope you found it helpful. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.